Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. It's good to be with you this morning. It's a wonderful day here in Springs. <laughs> it's 27 and a wind chill of 12. And the snow at least stopped. So, you know, we're looking forward to a good day here. And I hope you are too, wherever you are and whatever your day's plans are. You know, we're continuing in the story or the description of the words about Jesus beforehand called Advent, looking towards the coming. And I'm continuing in the book of Isaiah. In fact, I'll be in Isaiah this week and all next week as we look at some scriptures that point to Jesus' birth and his position as Savior of the world. So this morning, I'd like to share one verse from Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 16. And here are the words. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It's a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken. The passage here is talking about building something constructing something. It uses the imagery of uh, a building construction or a house. And it, it talks about a thing called the cornerstone. Now in today's construction techniques, we don't do much of that anymore. We talk about a foundation. But in the older days, you had a cornerstone. It was on the corner, obviously by the name. And it was the piece that began the structure and everything else was measured around that stone in terms of it, it, straightness, in terms of its supportness, if that's a word. The cornerstone was the essential piece upon which everything else is built. So if you have a lousy cornerstone, well, the building is not going to hold up very well. And it's that image here that the prophet Isaiah writes about nearly 700 years before Jesus was born. For us, nearly 2,700 years ago. Long time. I mean, this is amazing that so much could be said about Jesus so much before he was born. But nevertheless, it starts out by saying, therefore, I've mentioned this before, it's kind of silly, but it makes a lot of sense. Whenever you see a therefore, you ought to see what it's there for. Well, maybe that'll resonate in your head and it'll stick with you for a long time as it has with me. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. This is what God says. He says he's sovereign. That means he is the ruler over everything. He is the final say, as Harry Truman once famously said, the buck, buck stops here, meaning his desk, meaning he was responsible as president. Well, in this case, the buck stops on God's lap. He is the authority, and he's the authority for everything we do and say and believe. And I hope for you, he is. If he's not, okay, well, consider consider inviting him in to see what happens. But he says here, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem. Now for the Jews, Jerusalem was the most special place of all. It was the throne of David. It was where the Jewish empire was going to be centered in. It was symbolically the place where God lives. That's where the temple was built that Solomon put together and so on and so forth. He's, I'm putting a cornerstone, a foundation stone in Jerusalem. And the prophet is tying into all the history prior to this and all the history that's still yet to come. And he goes on to say, it's a firm and tested stone. 
You know, we like to know that things are tested before we latch on to them. You know, we like clinically tested toothpaste, for example. And then you watch all of these ads for drugs and they're clinically tested. There's something about knowing that somebody has evaluated this thing ahead of time that gives us some comfort and peace to trust it. And it says here that this is a, a precious stone, a tested stone. It's gone through the rigors of testing. Now here it's referring to the testing that God placed upon this cornerstone. And we can talk about that at another time. And it says it's a precious cornerstone and it's safe to build on. It will stand. You don't have to worry about the building collapsing because this cornerstone wasn't sufficient. This is, this person, this, this, this stone, this coming of Jesus is in fact what we can base everything on. I mean that, everything. All of life can be based on this stone. And it goes on to say in the last part of this verse, whoever believes need never be shaken. Now I know in the times around us, people are getting shaken. I know that people are, some people anyway, are really fearful. And we're always afraid of something we can't see. If at least if we could see it, we'd know when it, where it was and when it was around us. But you take something like a virus and you don't know where it is. You take all the precautions you can and it still sneaks in. And that causes a lot of fear. It causes a lot of people to wonder about what life is happening to them. And particularly during this time when we have family traditions and, and family ways of doing things, and we're not really able to do those. We, we lose that foundation of our lives, the family traditions, and, and many are left holding nothing. And it's not surprising that the level of depression and suicides are up. Um, that's sad, but it's at least understandable. So what this passage is saying to us today is God has made a cornerstone. He's tested it out. It's true. It's reliable. And if we trust in that cornerstone, then nothing can shake us off of our faith and our trust. So how does that describe you today? Yeah. During this Christmas season, is your faith shaken or is it more sturdy and firm than ever? Well, when we rely on the cornerstone, when we rely on Jesus, it says we will never be shaken. We certainly have something to lean on. And I mention all of this because all of this was written long before Jesus was born. That's amazing. And he is amazing. And I hope this Christmas season, you discover just how amazing he really is. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. Go out and play in the snow if you want to. At least if it's where you exist. If not, stay safe, stay warm. Thanks for listening. If you have a prayer concern or a need, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. God bless you. I'll talk to you again.